Hi everyone, Karen here with a really easy but brilliant, if I do say so myself, subitizing game. What do you need? A five frame, doesn't have to look like this as long as it's got five spaces. A container, this one I had to eat some really nice biscuits to get this. So it's got some wells in it. You might be able to use your subitizing and see how many all together. Three there, three there, or two, 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 or a four and a two. I'll stop now. And that is a side without a well there. So go and think about what biscuits you're buying. These are from Border. Very nice. And then I happen to have been collecting acorns in this. This is my, one of my husband's little trays he uses for painting. I think you can see it originally used to be a cooking container. Lots of these things around. You don't have to have acorns. You think about long as it's similar colour, similar size, similar shape, or if it's man-made, same size, same colour, same shape. Okay, so all we do is we're going to decide how many acorns we're going to use for this game. And remember, with a five frame and ten frame, we're not counting. I'm going to say, oops, let me just get ones there without their shells, that I want to have four. How do I know that's four? Obviously, it depends on where your children are in their experiences. But I'm going to say I know that four is on a ten, on a five frame, rather. The picture of four is when there's one not there yet. I can also see a two and a two. OK, so it depends on where your children are at. Don't count them. Those of you that haven't done training with me before, sing a little song when you're putting them on. Otherwise, even you will count them in your head. You don't need to count them. See how strong that image is. All right, so we know we've got four. And actually, you could play this game with children who don't know about four yet. You'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just drop them in. So the first thing we can do is exactly what I've done there. Drop them from a height. I can see three. I can see one. So you could do that a number of times. But what I did, and I wouldn't let my husband throw this away, is give it a shake and then see what happens. So I'm going to say you can take the top off if you want, but there's a two and a one and a one. This is like the kind of things we used to use to shake dice when I was a child in the 70s. You sort of press something and make it go pop. So what about this time? Oh, two and a one and a one. Oh, still got two and a one. Isn't it typical when you start doing this? It doesn't get any variation. Oh, two and a two. So got, oh. <laughs> That's subtraction, everybody, that bit. What have we got? Two and a one and a one. There in different places as well. We could increase the amount we've got or decrease the amount we've got. Let's decrease the amount we've got and take one away. We want to know how many are there. Let's put them on here. I can see it's not full this time because there are two spaces missing on the five frame. And I might know that when there are two spaces missing, that's what three looks like. I can also see the two and the one in the three. So let's put them back in here. Okay. Oh, what have we got? A one and a one and a one. Oh, still a one and a one and a one. Two and a one. I get all three of them in one place. <gasps> and three all together. So you could deliberately put them into different containers like I'm doing there. And then one last amount. Let's not see how many there are to begin with this time. We'll just put a load of them in here. I'm just getting the ones that haven't got the cups. Oh, got a nice little bit of moss there. So you might want to take the acorn cups. If you haven't got acorns, because it's not autumn where you live, it's not a problem. You could use man-made things. You can use anything that's going to make a lovely noise and do this sort of thing. So this time, a little bit more advanced, but I can see I've got a four and a four and a four. And even if you don't know that's called four, I'm going to say, oh, gosh, I said a four, didn't I? It's a three. Four and a four. So what happens when you talk and do subitizing at the same time? Four and a four. I know they're the same amount because there's a two and a two and a two and a two. Three and a three. There's a two and a one in those. And there's a two. That one's got the least. And those two have got an equal amount. It might be hard to see. So you might, with the children, want to rearrange them so it's more obvious. Let's do one more. The noise and the need to hold on to it makes it a 
make it even more exciting. I hope you could hear that. Okay, so finally, let's look for ones that have got the same amount in. Well, that one's got a two and a one. There's a three. There's your conceptual subitizing. There's a three, two and a one. There's a three, two and a one. Oh, that one's got a two and a one and a two. So that's definitely got more in. Maybe I know what that is or not, but I definitely know that's more than that. And that was equal to that. And that one's only got two in. If I want to know how many are there, let's just finish there. Take them out. Put them on here. Chat or sing a little song when you're doing it. And, oh my goodness, this time we know it's not what not four, because four looks like this. We know it's not three, because three looks like this. It's the number name when you fill it. And because it's called a five frame, when you fill it, it's called five. Enjoy, everyone. Can you see that maths does not need to be expensive? It does not need to have fancy equipment but it always needs to be very engaging and lots and lots of noticing and fun.